So now it's time for our third speaker, who is Catherine Levan from the National Ecological Observatory Network from the United States, who will talk to us about specimens in a broader context. Catherine? Uh, thank you. All right. Um, so uh, thank you very much. And uh, today I'd like to talk about NEON and our uh, implementation of the extended specimen. Community innovations in specimen digitization and data standards have resulted in digitized specimens that have a rich contextual metadata and wide reach. As highlighted in an article in Bioscience by Hedrick and all this year, while primary digitization of physical specimens is an important prerequisite, um, the ontologies and data standards are key components that have enabled broad sample discovery. These extended specimens have allowed for the exploration of cross-scale research questions that traverse multiple taxonomic, spatial, and temporal scales. And really together, these two initiatives promise to transform our understanding of the natural world. Um, and as people have mentioned uh, earlier in this session, uh, this is really an effort that is underway building on uh, the initiatives that have come before. The National Ecological Observatory Network, or NEON, has benefited substantially from communi community development of tools and standards. In my talk today, I'd like to highlight some of the work that NEON has done to implement um, and enable the extended specimen concept in our own collections and the ways that NEON is partnering with others to achieve more contextualized samples. A brief introduction to NEON. Um, it's an NSF funded, National Science Foundation funded continental scale observatory collecting data and samples at 81 field sites distributed across all major ecoregions of the US. More than 60 organismal sample types have been collected since 2013, and they're curated and archived by use, for use by the external research community uh, since 2013. Uh, NEON collections are primarily archived at the NEON Biorepository located in Tempe, Arizona at the ASU Natural History Collection. Um, currently, more than 200,000 NEON specimens are archived at this facility. Uh, notwithstanding the restrictions to our collection efforts this summer due to COVID, uh, NEON plans to archive between 80 and 120,000 specimens annually, stored in conditions meant to maximize their long-term data potential. Over the 30-year lifespan of the program, that will result in anywhere between 2.5 and 4 million specimens. These specimens span the gamut of environmental, microbial, plant, algal, invertebrate, and vertebrate material. Um, some of these samples resemble typical biocollection specimens. Uh, we have plant and entomological vouchers, for instance. Um, but other sample types, tissue, uh, from Mark Recapture Program, uh, DNA extracts, bulk samples, environmental samples, serve researchers that might not typically use a bio collection for their work. So with that context as backdrop, I'll turn to an example of a collection that NEON has been actively performing and our implementation of the extended specimen concept. Uh, note that while not every one of our 60 uh, specimen types that we archive has all of these ex extensions, um, many samples do. So take the Plant Diversity Monitoring Program at NEON as an example. NEON tags individuals in the field for observational monitoring. Um, one such individual, number 6370, was tagged in 2017. 
at a North Dakota site. Two years later, plant tissue was harvested from individuals 60 through 70 for archives. Leaf tissue from a subset of our tagged plant species are archived to allow for analysis of plant genetic diversity over space and time. This leaf tissue is collected according to a standardized protocol um, from the field, placed in a coin envelope, processed with desiccant uh, to air dry it. And once it's dry, the leaf tissue gets set, shipped to the neon biorepository and it's archived at negative 80 degrees C. As a first step, this tissue specimen has a large quantity of digitized metadata from the start. Mobile data collection and data processing infrastructure allow for the digital specimen record to have high res knowledge of the date and location of collection. Uh, taxonomy by neon botanists are included in the specimen record. And phenological information for this individual is available from 2017 through this um, through this summer. Species associations are documented on the NEON data portal. And if photographs are taken of the specimen, those are also included in the specimen record. Um, the voucher specimen pictured here, while not the individual itself, is a conspecific nearby individual um, collected the same year as the leaf tissue. And then all of the specimens that are archived at the NEON Biorepository are issued a unique IGSN from SESAR. NEON provides extensions to specimens with remote sensing data available for individuals like 6370. Known GPS coordinates allow us to view satellite imagery based on geolocation. There are interannual photos of plant individuals taken from cameras placed on the NEON tower. And NEON also does flyovers of the site to provide high resolution spectral data taken during peak green. So the graphic on the lower part of this slide is um, MDVI uh, calculated in 2017 um, from this North Dakota site location. And the little arrow is where um, this individual is in the landscape. Depending on the specimen, Analytical results such as sequence data, morphometrics, or isotope data might also be available. Because of the monitoring occurring around individual 6370s, we have that list of associated species that occur. And from here, we really move from the digitization of the initial specimen into the realm of ontologies and data standards. Um, so leveraging the Symbiota platform, where our specimen data is housed, we can natively explore species descriptions and photo vouchers of this species, uh, Symphlorocarpus occidentalis, um, by leveraging other networks that have posted um, such information. Our Symbiota portal allows for search by location, time frame, taxonomy, and collection type. Two minutes. Thank you. NEON uses external repositories for some of our data products where other groups have put in substantial investment into data processing and hosting. And specimen-based links from these repositories, uh, like the Barcode of Life, are folded into the pertinent specimen metadata record so that they can be uh, discovered from the record itself. Data visibility and discoverability is greatly increased by publishing to data aggregators using an ICT publishing mechanism. NEON has already published specimen information about NEON collected specimens to both GBIS and IDIGBIO. And as mentioned earlier, all NEON specimens archived at the ASC facility have an IGSN from SESAR as well. 
The NEON program has made great strides in creating a specimen pipeline where annually more than 100,000 specimens are curated and archived with this contextual framework uh, from birth. And this puts NEON program in a really great position to have digitized data and share that metadata. Um, however, there have been implementation challenges to this program that are not unique to the NEON project. Um, the maintenance of accurate information across portals, the NEON portal, external portals like BOLD, aggregators like GBIS, and the integration of up-to-date taxonomy information have probably been two of our biggest challenges. Um, for NEON, our success in overcoming these difficulties has been attributable to our use of community-developed data transfer protocols and our heavy reliance on the collections community for input on, on input on best practices. Um, taking these community resources to heart, NEON is able to provide access to open continental scale data and samples that are already being used to characterize and quantify complex, rapidly changing ecological processes. And these extended specimens will support a greater understanding of ecological change and enable forecasting of future ecological conditions. Uh, with that, I'd like to thank our uh, technical working group. This is the cohort that we had uh, this past year. We've had other uh, members serve uh, in previous years who have really provided a lot of support um, to the implementation of our biorepository um, and specimen discoverability uh, program. And I'd also like to acknowledge the staff that work at the NEON Biorepository who have been really helpful and uh, key members to getting this implemented and off the ground. And thank you. Thank you very much, Catherine. Uh, we're waiting to, to see if people have questions that they can share in the chat or in the document. In the meantime, sure. I have a question myself. <laughs> And yeah, that is, great. you mentioned that one of the key components of the success of this project is having uh, community input and a set of best practices. So given that you're tackling so many different things at a time, it would seem so many, yeah. you touch very different disciplines at a time. How do you keep those best practices running and are they shared with openly like with the rest of the global community? Yeah, great question. So the Biorepository Technical Working Group uh, has been wonderful. They are one of uh, 20 technical working groups that we have going at any one time. Um, that's the number that we have this past year, but we've had uh, groups come on and come off as we've uh, cycled through different uh, challenges through the program. Um, but each of these groups has a specialty in terms of what data products they really uh, can provide support on. Um, and so we've been really able to take advantage of these different disciplines in order to make the program move forward um, and, and use those best practices as apply in those different disciplines. So really the, the group is, is quite large uh, in terms of the support that we uh, have been able to garner. And we've, um, this past year, been posting the deliverables and uh, main recommendations of each of the technical working groups on our, uh, on our website. So those are viewable to anyone. Thank you. But we have a question yeah. um, in the chat. Does, does extended digitization in this context include metadata about indigenous consultational rights? We work really closely with all of our stakeholders and we have a wide range of, of stakeholders and site hosts that uh, give input on the collections that we uh, can do in the locations where they happen. Um, 
We don't have any collections that are actively happening on tribal lands, but we do have 33 different uh, entities on whose lands we collect samples. We don't own any of the land that we um, are doing collections on. And so, you know, in Hawaii, we've been working with uh, a stakeholder group uh, that, you know, these kinds of questions are extremely important. Um, and so the things that we do uh, are very much in consultation with, with those groups and the information that we share, um, you know, some of it is uh, redacted um, and, you know, sensitive to those privacy concerns that they have. Um, and so people can request access, um, but they need to get permission from uh, those, those stakeholders in order to get fuller access to the data set. But many things are available. Um, natively. Thank you. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. The next question that I see is, have you seen any indication that more ecologists are using collections data on specimens from, from the neon sites? That's a great question. So there have been a number of people that I have seen asking to use specimens and um, wanting to do analyses with them. Uh, when previous work uh, that they've done has not really involved museum curated specimens before. Um, so I have to think that, you know, it's early days. We've just started the Neon Biorepository as a facility um, in the last few years, but I think over the 30 year time span of the uh, project, it's very likely that we'll see an increase over time. Thanks, Catherine. Then another question yeah. from the audience is uh, here. Are the IGSN stored in Symbiota? Yes, yeah, so the IGSNs are stored on the specimen uh, record, and it's not stored with the resolver, um, but if you plug in the identifier um, into the IGSN resolver, you will pull up um, a linked specimen record uh, that has information about the specimen. So, yeah. I, thank you, Catherine. I don't see any more questions in the chat or on the document, but we still have a couple of minutes that, you, that we could use. So Great. if there are more questions, please capture them so that we can ask Catherine and learn more about Neon. So I will I will add a question myself then. Um, and yeah. so working again about about the the diversity in the people that you work with, since you're working with so yeah. many different uh, disciplines, do you do you find that you have to adapt your processes or your protocols or rather your way of approaching people to collaborate differently in the different disciplines that you tackle? Yeah, I, I think. I think it has been really interesting. We have a team of maybe 40 uh, scientists and there's not a lot of overlap in discipline between each person. So um, we do have kind of an interdisciplinary approach there. Um, and then to make this project work, we've had to do a lot of cross-disciplinary work, not just within ecology writ large, um, but within our engineering department and within you know, the software engineering folks and getting all of this to scale um, 
really means being clear about that you want as a deliverable and an outcome. Um, but it, it's been an interesting mix of community input uh, on the one side, driving what it is that we're going to produce. And then um, these different groups uh, on the other side in terms of uh, how we're gonna make it all come together. Um, and get everything onto the data portal. Um, so yeah, it, it has been a different approach, um, but I, I think it's been a, a very productive one to be very um, feature focused and um, responsive to, to stakeholder needs. Thank you, Catherine. And I thank you for your talk, and we will keep discussing uh, Neon in in the discussion during the discussion time. And we will now uh, leave uh, 